Okay, hello everyone, Visas of Julius here, back with a new tutorial. So as some of you might have seen, I was in Indonesia for one and a half months. I went there to meet new people, explore, go to new places, just like enjoy life in general. That was the best decision I've ever made in my life. I met so many new people, went to the most insane places in the world and I'm just must say that if you have the possibility to go to travel around the world do it as soon as you can you won't regret that at all and the meaning of this tutorial is to teach you how to turn a day image into a night image in photoshop so without further ado let's get right into it roll the intro So now I have moved here to Photoshop and I have opened three different images that I'm going to show you how to blend them together, how to turn this sunset image into a night scene. And the first technique I'm going to show you is a technique that I use all the time when I'm editing my single shots and that is separating different objects from your image um, to different layers so you can play around with the perspective. And I usually do that with just cutting elements out from the image. So for this one, I want to separate the sky and the island. So I'm grabbing the rectangle tool here, just making a selection of the island and the sky, hitting Ctrl J on my keyboard. So I get that into a separate layer. Then I'm going to resize this. So Ctrl T and while holding shift, I resize. And that's about it. So I just wanted to make the island and the sky a bit bigger like that. Then we're gonna uh, grab my eraser tool to get rid of this strong line and you can resize your brush by hitting alt on your keyboard and then holding your right mouse button and just dragging right or left or up and down and that changes the brush size. Make sure when you're removing this line that your opacity and flow are both set to 100% and I'm just gonna click once here and then hold shift and click once here and now that removes the line. Then I'm gonna get rid of the sky and at this point I want to combine these two. If you want you can create, duplicate this and then hit Ctrl E and then put this into a group and name this original and that's what I usually do. So I just keep originals but if you don't want to have, as you can see here we have 227 megs. If I delete that, it's gonna get a lot of smaller. So if your computer is not the fastest, you can just combine them, but I prefer keeping the original ones. So yeah, now I'm gonna separate the sky. So I'm gonna grab the rectangle tool again and make a selection to the horizon level like that. Going to select and then color range. So this is a tool that I use to cut out skies if the conscious difference between the sky and the object that I want to cut out is strong like this. So if you only have like a black thing that you want to cut out, color range is perfect for that. Because as you can see here, if I click on the sky, it doesn't select the whole sky. But if I click on the island, that selects the whole island. And the fuzziness here determines how much of that selection you have. And I usually put this to a point where you can't see any white in the sky or any white here. So something like that. Then we're gonna hit OK and now you can see that we have a nice selection on the island. But I also want to include this foreground because we want to get rid of the sky and I'm gonna do that with the layer mask. But now if I click on the layer mask you can see that we get rid of everything else and we don't want that. Um, so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna use the rectangle tool holding shift and you get this little plus icon on the rectangle tool gonna go to the horizon level and now you have more selection here and then I'm gonna add a layer mask and now you can see that we only got rid of the sky and you probably saw that we also got rid of some parts here but that can be easily fixed by clicking control and then on the layer mask and then just take a brush and with the color set to white you can just brush here to get that island back so with layer masks always white color brings back and black color removes and also you can invert the selection by clicking uh, pressing ctrl shift i on your keyboard and you can see that we have some parts here so now i'm gonna select the black color and you can change the colors here by just clicking x on your keyboard i'm gonna resize my brush and just go here and now we got rid of that so now our island and the foreground is on the same layer but our sky 
is not there and I'm now gonna add our star sky I'm gonna put this layer under here and then I'm gonna hit ctrl T again flipping this horizontal and then resizing it and that's it then I want to add Michael my friend Michael from this shot and blend it into the ocean and just put it everything above hit ctrl T again to move it around I'm just gonna match the perspective like that maybe a bit higher and that's it then I want to remove some of the ocean and that can be done in a way that I first select my claw with the quick selection tool usually I would use color range for this but because we have some completely black areas here it will also select those so quick selection works better here now and Photoshop does a really good job selecting the edges now I'm gonna use the inverting selection again Control shift I and then with an eraser and with a shove brush flow set to maybe 40% I'm just gonna brush some of that ocean out but I want to leave the beach and then the small waves that was too much so yeah that's it now you can see that we have our beach here Michael here and the island here and now we just have to start blending now we are going to start blending so most of the people know how to get the edit to this point but they don't know how they can blend that better and I'm gonna give you now a couple cool tips on how you can blend your edits further and um, these tips can be implemented on every edit that you are doing from now on so pay attention first I'm gonna click control and then here on the layer mask to select the outlines and I'm gonna show you the power of hue and saturation layers. So I'm gonna put a hue and saturation layer on top of everything. Uh, and here, first you have to think about how a night scene would look like. Of course, it's a bit darker and it doesn't have as much colors as a day scene. So that would make sense to take the saturation down and also the lightness down. Okay and then you can see the before and after you can see okay we lost a lot of color and the sky is blue so maybe we want some blue also to the foreground so we're gonna do that with the color balance because here on color balance you can choose highlights shadows and midtones and you can put any color to those so first i'm gonna put some blue to the shadows just a couple then to the highlights i want some magenta here so I'm gonna add some magenta and then to the mid-tones I'm gonna add some blue and also some cyan and now you can see that it blends pretty well with the foreground I mean with the sky and here on the hue and saturation I want to make this I'm using the hand to pick the color and I want to make this more red and maybe increase the lightness of that but now you can see that the horizon level looks kind of strange so it doesn't look really that realistic yet because we have some light here but then we don't have any light source here so we have to create that light source so I'm gonna create a layer on top of the night sky layer I'm gonna pick my brush and then I'm gonna select a color and let's select a bright orange here and then I'm gonna change my blending adjustment here I mean my layer adjustment to overlay and what overlay does I will show you if I put my flow to 100% it does the effect like kind of inside the layer on top of surfaces and if I would do it with normal you can see that it kind of just looks like a brush stroke instead of it being in the layer if that makes any sense it's kind of hard to explain but I hope you hope you get the idea so yeah, let's redo this now. I'm going to delete that layer uh, and do another one. So here, just put this to overlay your flow, let's say 20%. And then you just start brushing some highlights from the horizon. And also I want to do it from the middle and then a bit to the Milky Way too, to make some sense of lighting. And then I'm going to take the fill down just to even out the effect a bit and I'm gonna do the exact same thing on top of everything because now we really don't have any brightness on here but we have some coming 
kind of behind the horizon so we have to even that out and for this I'm gonna use a bit stronger color but still with an overlay I'm gonna press something here and some here and also here so just I want to create a light source there because there was a light source in the original edit too I mean on the original image and then what I use usually in my edits is a lot of different highlights when it comes to night edits I like to have some kind of magic in my images so what I usually do is an overlay brush and I just think that if I have a strong highlight somewhere I will make it a bit even higher I mean a bit stronger so here we have a highlight and I like to make it a bit stronger same here same here and kind of all over the image but sometimes it gets too strong and then I'm just taking the fill down. And now I want to blend this even a bit further. And for that I'm going to use curves. So here in curves you have blacks on the left down corner. And if I bring it up you can see it opens the blacks. If I bring it to the right it makes the blacks darker. And here's the highlights and the same for this. If I bring it down it makes the highlights darker. If I bring it to the left it makes the highlights um, brighter so I'm gonna do a so-called blending curve and this is done by increasing the blacks and here we have midtones so decreasing the midtones and then making some contrast by increasing the highlights so this is a really nice blending curve that just evens out the whole image and usually I take the fill down just a bit and, and then I'm gonna add a gradient map and these are a nice way to kind of blend your images even further. So I'm going to explain how this works. I usually use this one and I'm just going to change the color. So usually I'm using a uh, bright orange and then for the shadows I'm using a dark blue. So here you can see that this color on the right affects the highlights and this color here affects all of the shadows and some of the midtones. I'm going to click OK and taking the fill down to 10%. Now you can see that that evens out. It's a really slight change, but you can definitely see it. This is something that I use all the time. And then I'm gonna add another color balance, and now I'm gonna do it on top of the whole image. Because with this one, you can really blend the colors in even further. And for this one, I think making the midtones a bit more yellow and adding some magenta and then also some red would look great and on the highlights add some red add some magenta and maybe some yellows and that adds a nice magical look to the image in my opinion and you can take the fill down of that a bit and then i'm gonna add a brightness and contrast layer and these are all like different things that you can implement into your edits in the future uh, so i'm just coming up with this kind of as i go uh, because these are techniques that I use all the time. So for this one, I'm gonna decrease the brightness, increase the contrast, and then I'm gonna take the whole effect off, and then I'm gonna brush some of it back in. So with a bigger flow, I'm just gonna brush some vignetting here, just to create some, like, just to make the light source to stand out a bit more. And that's a bit too strong, so then you can always take the fill down. And now I want to create some haze. So usually what I use a lot in my edits is haze. And sometimes I do with a normal brush, uh, with a normal brush like this. So I'm making the flow really small. Even 1%, maybe 2%. And then I'm brushing some haze in. And this is how I do it. Just start brushing overall the whole edit this blends in everything super well and you can even sample a color and just like kind of play around with it there's not really there's no really ru rules to any of this what i'm doing right now so you can just like do whatever you want uh, sample a color and then brush and that's it and then always take the fill down to even out the effect so let's see what we've done so far here let's group all of these Control G and let's see that's it and we did that in just a couple of minutes 
and this is where most of the people leave their edits and this is what they should maybe do uh, to make it stand out a bit more. I think this is everything that I want to do for this photo now, I mean for this edit now in Photoshop. I hope you learned tons of new things from this video, especially the overlay brushes, hue and saturations, color balances and everything. Uh, they are really cool techniques that you can implement into your own edits in the future. And I hope you understand the process of turning a day scene into a night scene a bit better now. Um, yeah. I would appreciate if you could write down some suggestions about videos that you want to see from me because I want to get more into YouTube and I don't want to stick only to tutorials. I want to do some videos about my life and about my routines, daily routines. It's just like uh, normal stuff like that. Yeah, if you like the video, click the like button below, subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next video.